Hello there, Uncle from TacticalGamer.com. Going to try and give you guys an update on the support modules. Uh, run this through a few times, and with sound issues and that, I'm going to try again here. Um, basically, support modules are a support requester module. Okay, I've named support requester, given it a chosen a custom HQ entity that's going to give it some name during the radio traffic, and set all the uh, different supports you can call in as unlimited. Okay, there here is my artillery support provider that is linked to actual artillery units, a mortar and an MLRS, and I have a scorcher here that it is not linked to. Okay, I will get back to that later. I've named my scorcher uh, my scorcher. Okay, so <clears throat> how I did the supports the last time, and I don't recommend, was just by linking a playable unit that you want to be able to have access to the supports to the requester and a requester to a provider. The problem with this scenario is, is let's say I have another player, okay, for whatever reason, and so I got a playable unit down here. Let's say I'm the first one that joins the server, and I jump in as the engineer. A couple of minutes later, my buddy's going to join the server, but here's the problem. When the server initialized the mission started the simulation. It set up a relationship for a playable unit that would be able to call in supports but that playable unit wasn't in the simulation yet. So then when you join later that relationship should have already been set and it won't be. Okay <clears throat> so the way I want to do this now is to not set that up. Okay and what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you that you don't need to synchronize these objects. It works good if you can synchronize these, but we can add this one later. Uh, we can synchronize this object with that module using a scripting command. And we can synchronize this to this to this with a scripting command as well. Um, you could do this right here in the init unit. Okay? If I had, and let's do that for the sake of demonstration. Okay, as you can see, there should actually be for bis function add support link, there should be three parameters. And the third parameter would be the support provider. So you're linking the unit that can call the requester and the requester and the support provider just like you would in the map. That's basically how you're doing with scripting. Okay, but if I only pass the first two, okay, it's only going to link the player to the requester. If I already had the requester, let's say, linked to one of my other options, like my helicopter transport, which is already set up, okay, when I join the mission, this is going to link my test guy and my requester together, which, since that's already connected, will then give me access immediately to that. But it will not give me access to my art artillery. So basically, I'm just going to run that and add the artillery once I get into the mission. So if you did that with a trigger, you had to go clear out some enemies first before, or, you know, whatever it was, get the supply truck down to the artillery location so they actually have rounds to shoot. Now you have artillery, that sort of thing. So I'm going to go into that quickly into the mission. Uh, we've got the transport modules. We've got the close air support for helicopters. Um, there is a uh, supply drop module that I've just linked to a helicopter. There's nothing special, but this helicopter, because it's linked, will then just fly around and then drop down supplies and come back and land at base. If, in this case, if somebody blew up this helicopter, you would never be able to get a supply drop again, right? If you use the virtual option, it would just spawn in another helicopter, and there you go. Um, the planes, I got a fixed wing plane here, okay, that is linked to a support provider real type, fixed uh, close air support real, and I'm going to get that set up. This plane is going to have the behaviors of this module, so he's going to take off the runway. Uh, I first set this up, put the plane on the wrong end of the runway, and basically the plane tries to taxi all the way down here, get onto the runway, and then take off. And sometimes it gets to take off, and sometimes it doesn't. So that's the problem with using uh, actual units for the support providers for fixed cl wing uh, close air support. It's better off to use the modules and you can do a, a virtual module, put it way out in the middle of nowhere because it'll just spawn in a plane, it'll fly into a bombing run and then fly back when it gets close to the module, it just deletes itself. 
So it's a good thing to actually put these far out at sea where you don't see that kind of uh, vehicles coming in and being deleted. Okay, let's get into this, see how it actually works. Okay. Okie dokie. Be advised, support units are now on standby. Out. So, I've got a plane down at the far end of the runway, which is about to take off. Okay, I do have some supports, right? I should have the helicopter transport option. So, zero, eight, and I do have helicopter transport, but I don't have my artillery. So let's get that run and running. Use my debug, <coughs> okay? What I'm going to do is, I've got this function as support link. I'm just going to add now the actual artillery. SP, already executed, and Be advised, boom. support units are now on standby. Out. I now have artillery. Zero 08. Artillery strike. I got a mortar. And for whatever reason, this seems to be barked out. Requesting immediate fire support at the four shots, coordinates. but it's only going to give me um, one. Ordinances it's a bug since Out. the last update. He's Rounds done. Complete. Out. Okay, so now let's see what I can do uh, about adding that scorcher. Splash. Out. To add the scorcher in, first I need to remove my link so I can work with the uh, support provider, I believe. So remove the link, which removes all of my support links because it also removed the link between me and the requester. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy this for later. I'm going to go, uh, well, let's call this function uh, limit support okay and the parameters you pass to this are first the name of this requester requester and uh, then it would be the type oh no that's not what I want to do <laughs> right I want to synchronize the scorcher to the support provider for the artillery so the support provider is SPRD, and I want to synchronize um, objects at, and then it's an array, so it's my scorcher. That's the only object I want to add. To the synchronization okay you don't see anything happen but now it actually synchronized the scorcher to the, the provider module okay now I add in my artillery link and here's what's interesting is because the artillery is already linked to the uh, requester the support provider and the support provider for the helicopter transport is already linked it's going to link them all to me No, oh, I would have to change that back to add. Be advised, support units are now on standby. So I've got Out. my helicopter transport again and my and my artillery. So let's see if it works for the scorcher. There's my scorcher. Requesting immediate fire support at the designated coordinates. <coughs> Over. Target location received. Ordinance is inbound. Out. This would be my second fire mission that I've executed since the simulation started. And it's going to count this. I can limit how many I have. And that's what I started doing by mistake in a second ago. Rounds complete. So Out. my support requester, uh, the type of 
support I want to limit. Out. This one is artillery. And there's specific strengths for that. Um, all right, so this is artillery, and I want to limit it to three. I've already formed two, and then it's called this function limit support. Okay, so I still should have one artillery mission, zero, 08, and let's call in the MLRS. Okay, so the two is the N5 sandstorm, and it's called. Requesting the immediate missiles. fire support at the designated coordinates. Over. Target location received. Ordinance is inbound. Out. Rounds complete. I'm going to add in the close air support, fixed, uh, cast, real. Dang it, I removed it again. Be advised, support units are now on standby. Out. Now you notice that the already went away. I don't have the RD anymore, but that's because I limited it to three. Okay. Splash, out. So now the artillery buttons went away. Again, support requester. Actually, might as well call this in now so it's happening. Zero 08 calling the bombing run. Requesting immediate airstrike at the transmitted coordinates. Over. Copy that. Strike aircraft on the way. Out. I'm not sure where he is, but he's can't be too there he is. So now he's gonna immediately vector in and do that bombing run. Okay, so and while I'm doing that, I'm gonna add the artillery back. So support re support requester. Artillery. Let's make it four. Be advised, support units are now on standby. Out. And I've got my artillery back. So that's pretty pretty cool, and it's pretty easy to control. One of the things that you want to know about this is if I'm going to add in the helicopter transport option, which I already have. Okay. There's a bug Enemy and I'll spotted. Fast mover, one and a half clicks southeast. Bug with this, I'll let you know. Okay, if I am scrolled into my map like this when I get here, before I get in the helicopter. I'm going to be in a bad way if I get in and then try to give it a location to land. So you want to make sure that your map is zoomed out, like far out, before you get into this. Um, so if I call a helicopter transport, I'm going to use the Ghost Hawk. Requesting airlift at the designated coordinates. Over. Roger. Transport dispatched. Okay, now if I get in. Everyone in? Let's get out of here. I have to go to my map to tell it where I want to go, but I'm stuck zoomed in, so if I have to go all the way across that, map, I'm in big trouble. So. Copy. We're moving out. Now, while we're doing this, Payload the delivered. plane should be out. RTB and um, landing soon. Two, stop. Copy that. So if you have a landing pad uh, around somewhere, the helicopters will try to land on those before they land anywhere else. So 
that's a great way of knowing that and you can control where your helicopters land. <coughs> We're here. Good luck out there. I want to wait because I want to show how bad the pilots can be and why it's sometimes better to be using the virtual supports for the for the fixed wings for sure. Uh, as you can see, it's actually quite easy to control all these different uh, modules using these functions. You just need to put a little time and thought into what you need specifically for your mission uh, and to be able to add these in. Um, so you can either synchronize these right up to your requester right off the bat or to give them to your players as is required throughout your scenario. Uh, so there you go. That's uncle from tacticalgamer.com. I hope you enjoy using this as a better way of adding support uh, for artillery and all that to your missions. Catch you in game.